I got something to show you this morning. This is the battery for the Texas Power Paddle electric motor unit that I've installed on my Lynx. I'm not gonna do an install video, but I'll leave a link in one of these two corners so you can see how this uh, motor is installed on this kayak. So check it out. I've got two connecting wires, which we're gonna hook up to the back. And it's pretty easy to connect. So I'm gonna unlash the cover. I'm gonna hit the power button. It's gonna beep a few times. I'm gonna close this up. And we're gonna put this under the seat. All right, I think we're ready to go. Let's go fishing, let's talk about the Texas Power Paddle. Most Hobie fishing kayaks have a transducer cavity that's covered with, by um, a plate. And typically that's where you put in a fish finder. The transducer sits in there nice and, and, and tucked in and protected with the plate. But I've taken the transducer out and I've put it on the side of the kayak. I've got a uh, Yak Attack switchblade over here on my left side. And where the transducer used to be, is a tiny little motor made by Texas Power Paddle. You saw the battery that I put under my seat. And this little motor and battery probably total weight is around 15 pounds. My goal was to add power to this kayak and not necessarily get the fastest motor I could find, but I wanted something light, easy to install, low profile, that would serve me in these marshes that I fish. And a lot of these marshes have oyster beds. And what happens is when I engage this motor, the motor is going to pop out. And it's only gonna drop in the water maybe five inches. And if I were to hit an oyster bed or something, the motor will actually pop back into the cavity, into the recessed area on the bottom of the links. So right now the motor's on, you can hear it. The motor has popped out. Right away we're cruising around three miles an hour. If I turn it off, I don't know if you could hear that, but it gives a, a thrust of reverse for just a second, and that motor, which is in the water, pops back into the cavity. I'm going against current and against wind. I've got about three-quarter throttle, and without pedaling, I'm doing about three miles an hour. And there are days where I found that I'm, I'm fighting current and wind and it's a bit of work to try to get to a place or get back, especially. In order to uh, fish a little bit longer on the water or go a little bit further, I decided to invest in this motor. I think that was a strike. Good fish. Well, not as big as I thought, but nice fighter. Nice fighting fish. Come here, redfish. Yeah. All right, let's put you back. On the Facebook groups I belong to, some of the uh, Lynx owners that have this Texas Power Paddle were saying that it's a little bit noisy. And I don't, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on behind me? For a fish to be going off right behind me, you know this motor isn't that noisy. If I crank it all the way up, sure it makes some noise, but it's not bad at all. Whatever was feeding over there isn't there anymore, or if it is, it's, it's taking a break. And we're going to head out of here. I crank this up. 
Head on over here. And I'm still going against the current. So with the motor on, some very light pedaling, I'm doing three and a half miles an hour. Fish on, fish on. Stay on now, stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Stay on. He's shaking his head, shaking his head. Oh, feels like a good one. Where are you? I think that's a redfish. I haven't seen it yet though. It drags fairly tight. Get out of there, get out of there. Man, this fish is still down. I loosened that drag on purpose because this is the uh, eight pound test. I didn't want it too tight. Starting to come up, starting to come up. Oh, it's a jack. My gosh. It's a jack. Come on up here. Come on up here. Oh, gotcha. Wow. Had that camera covered because that rain. But I'm uncovering it so you can see this Jack Creval. Man, he slammed that, that paddle tail. That's a pretty good jack. I'm not gonna measure him because I need to get him back in the water. Nice fish, good fighter. This is where I caught that redfish earlier this morning. I missed another one. The other day I caught a nice snook here. No snook today though. I was hoping for one, but no snook today. So I think what I'll do is I'll just show you that snook I caught the other day. Enjoy this clip. Well guys, I'm not getting any bites, but it's gorgeous out here. Really still. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh my gosh. I said I wasn't getting any bites and look at that. Oh yeah. That looks like a big snook. trying to take me into those oysters but I think I can turn him He's not done yet. Just make sure he doesn't get underneath me. Keep a little tension on him. Good looking snook. Oh, but I got him. Wow. Well, I'm out here casting, 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 not one single bite. I'm even talking about how I'm not catching fish, but enjoying the morning, and then bam. He just nailed this artificial shrimp. Just nailed it. Let's put this over here. Get the fish grippers out. Let's check you out.
get the pliers and get this hook out. There we go. Drop that there. We're going in just a little bit. Well, let's check this fish out. Look at this. So these snook have delicate jaws. So you got to make sure you support their weight and use two hands on the fish if you can. And I'd say he goes about uh, maybe 24 or so. And this snook goes 25 and a half. All right, pretty fish, let's put you back. Make sure you're strong enough to swim away. All right, off he goes. All right, guys, let's check out the, uh, the battery level on this motor. Here's the battery unit. We've got 49% uh, battery left. And we pushed it pretty hard today. Well, that's it for today, guys. Time to get this boat cleaned up and get it ready to fish another day. Thanks for watching.